In this video, we'll learn how to use SQLite 3 with Takinter. I've already written most of the boring GUI code, so we'll be focusing on the more interesting SQL stuff and how to set up the database, how to insert data, retrieve data, validate data, etc. So let's take a look at our application. It's a simple GUI application where you can register yourself as a user. You can also log in once you register yourself. And once you log in, it's going to take you to a main page, which shows the details of every single user. Okay, very simple application, very basic features that you might see in many different GUI applications. Okay, so now we're not going to go into the technical details of the GUI here, um, because that's not relevant. I will just be ex explaining what is necessary for the purpose of the video. Okay because it's like a hundred lines of GUI code. So the first thing that we need to do is set up our SQLite database. So what you're gonna do is import SQLite 3 and you're gonna have this library by default because it's included with the standard Python library. No need to install it. The first thing that we need to do is set up a connection object. So we'll do SQLite3.connect and here we're gonna type in the name of our database. I'll call it tutorial.db. Now this is a smart function. So if this file does not exist, it's going to create it. And if it doesn't exist, it'll just load it. So if I run this code, it's going to create this tutorial.db file right here. I'll just delete it for now. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is to create a cursor object. The cursor object is like a special object which contains various functions which we'll use to communicate with the database, like executing SQL queries. Now we're going to create a table. So like databases contain various tables. They can contain different information, like different categories of information. Like a table can be for users. Another table can be for like products, etc. We just have, a, you know, a single table called users in this application because it's not a very complex application but realistically there would be more. So I'm just gonna paste out this query that I've written out beforehand. It's basically creating a table. If it does not already exist, create table is the name of the command. And this is the name of the table. And within these parentheses comes the different fields, the different columns we want to create in the table. So we have ID. ID is basically gonna be our primary key and it's in teeter. It's also an auto increment, which means that we don't need to specify this when entering records. So we just insert user one, for example, and it's automatically going to assign him the ID one. We insert a second user, it'll automatically assign him the ID two. So then there's name and it's, t and all of these are text actually, except for age. Then these three we've made not null. So it's going to throw an error this query if, when we execute it, if these are null. These we can consider as optional fields. They're not very important. These three, however, are way more important. But of course, the final choice would be up to you, depending on your needs. So this is just a multi-line string. To actually execute this, we need to use the cursor object and just pass this in here. Okay, and it'll create the table. So what we'll do now I just want to verify that this actually executed. So we'll do user dot, uh, we, need, we need to do commit actually. This is another important concept. If you make a change to the database, which modifies it in any way, like you add a record or you create a table or you modify a record, you need to call the commit function after executing the query. Because it's kind of like a save thing. It's a save feature. You make a query, you make a modification, then you need to commit that change to actually make it reflect in the database, okay? Uh, otherwise, if you're just doing a read query, for example, you wouldn't need to do this because you're not modifying the table. I want to verify that this actually executed successfully. So what I'll do is cursor.execute, then run this command, which retrieves all the information, okay, from the special table. This is like a special name, a special table you can import from and it gives you all the details about the tables within the database. Okay, it's like a pre-built uh, table. So do cursor dot fetch all or do fetch one because we only have a single table, right? So we'll just do fetch one 
and run this command and there we go there's our table you can see the information about it the name of the table and then the SQL query used to create that table okay pretty cool this is how we know our table has been created okay so I'm just going to remove this now and we'll continue on with our code so let's get into the actual important part of this video so what we need to do first is the register function okay this is all the code made to you know make that UI for it and this is the function that we need to code the submit function the first thing we'll do is write our query insert user data so we can write a multi-line string or you can do a single line string as well but I just find it easier to break it across multiple lines so the first thing we need to do is write this command insert into okay and then you write which table you want to insert into like users then in these brackets you'll write the names of the fields so what are the names of the fields you need to write them in the same order that you created them name password email age gender address we won't add ID because it's an auto incremented field it'll update auto automatically so name password email then we had age gender address age gender address then we'll come to the next line and write values now this is where we would normally put in values like John one two three etc we could use an F string to place these values in here but instead what's recommended to prevent SQL injections which is like a hacking technique we do this this is called a parameterized query a parameterized query it's kind of hard to pronounce that um, but yeah this is how you do it okay you just put in these question marks and these are placeholders next what you do is get all the values in a list sorry a tuple like this and just put that back over there all right now what we're gonna do with this let me just align that okay it's not getting aligned whatever that's fine so we'll come down here and do cursor.execute then we'll pass in the query insert user data the query then we're going to pass in the user data and this will automatically match these two things up okay these six placeholders will get filled in by these six values okay so that's going to happen automatically and if you're wondering why this one looks different that's because it's the text widget not the entry widget so it's a bit different it's like multi-line input so you need to specify um, you know the first line to the end well, now we'll do another commit because we've just modified the database then what we'll do is self.destroy we'll destroy this window then we'll do main window self.master we'll create the new sorry not the main window we should yeah the main window we register then we'll take ourselves to the main window that sounds all right okay is there anything else no i think we're good so let's just check this out register then we'll do just you know type in some details and hopefully this should work on the first go submit and good we're here now I can only hope that the user was actually entered so what should we do how do we verify that the user was actually entered what we'll do at the very start just for debugging purposes is select all from users then we'll do print cursor dot fetch all okay so when I run this it shows us the user has been created okay cool we'll just leave that in there until we're done so I'm gonna do the login feature next okay because I can't go to the main window anymore unless I register a new user or login so let's do the login here's our submit button we'll do username is equal to we'll just get the username and stuff first we'll do it differently this time I'm just looking at these names here that's the one for the username entry whoops then we'll do dot get then we'll get the password self dot sorry password dot get all right now we'll write the query I'll just write it in directly because it's going to be pretty short we'll do select all all the fields from users 
where, we'll just write this like that, where name is question mark, question mark is placeholder, okay, and password, sorry, and password is equal to question mark. Now, over here, we'll type username and password. So this is the same thing that we did previously in the register function, but I've just made it more in line this time. I didn't put the query in a separate variable. I didn't put the, um, well, kind of it is in variables, but I just put the list in directly in there. Okay, so yeah, it's a shorter way of doing it for shorter queries. Now we're not modifying anything in here, so no need to commit. We'll do print cursor dot fetch one. Well, actually we don't need to print anything. Okay, we won't print anything because we already know the user is in there. We'll just do this, user is equal to cursor dot fetch one. And if user, because if there's no user, then this is going to be like null. Okay, so if user, if the user is some value, some non-zero value, that means we have um, logged in. All right, so what do we do when we log in? We can um, go to the main window. So self.master, then we'll do, well, we should do self.destroy regardless of whether we go to, um, whether we logged in successfully or not, because we want to remove the login window, or maybe, maybe not. Maybe we can just keep the user there on the login window if he fails. So we can just clear these. That's an idea. Again, this is really open-ended. You can do whatever you want to. So how to be clear, I kind of forgot. What you can do is, not sure why delete isn't showing up here in the suggestions, or yeah, it's probably because I'm not typing it right. Okay, delete, zero, tk.end, and we'll do the same for the password entry. So if the user types in an incorrect, you know, details, we can just do a printout. You have typed in the wrong details, and we'll just verify this, okay? And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's do this. I'll go to the login page and we already have a user registered. I'm just gonna type in a wrong name first and see what happens. Okay, so somehow we have the same mistake over there. I did not notice that. Let me just try this again. Okay, good. So it says you have typed in the wrong details and it clears the fields. Now I'll type in the real username and password. And look at that. All right. So I figured out the problem. It's kind of dumb, but it's something that can very realistically happen to you. So you need to make sure. Um, well, basically it's this. Take a look at this. You can see an extra space over there. I typed in an extra space when writing in my name. So that's what is happening here. So what you should ideally do, like in reg the register window, when the user types and stuff, you should like clear away all of that, you know, white space. See? So this is what you should really be doing. Cleaning your inputs. All right? Lesson learned. So we'll just come up here and for now, we'll just deal with it and I'll type in an extra space each time I want to log in. Okay, but just make sure you, you don't make this mistake. So let's just do this again. I'll type an extra space after my name, then do submit and we're on the main page. All right, cool. Pretty cool. So now what we'll do is, um, hold on. Let me just verify everything's okay. Yeah. All right, so what we're gonna do now is generate the user. Okay, this is the last thing that we need to do. We did the register, we did the login. Now it's time to generate all the details for all the users, okay? This part is quite simple. You just need to do cursor.execute and the same thing that we did before actually, um, you know, to generate this. So all we need to do is select all from users, right? That's pretty much it. Then users is equal to cursor dot fetch all. 
that's it. It'll just return a list of users just like this. Now, I won't bore you guys with the details of how to make the GUI for this. So I'm just going to paste it in here. All right. Let me just explain it to you. What's happening here is that we define the columns. We define some column widths. We then iterate over this list of column names and then we generate lab labels. All right. Let me just show you that. Okay. I'll do this one by one. Login. So what this line does is it generates these column names. All right. So what this does is I traits over this or more specifically diet rates over this. Yeah, that was a typo. So it I traits over this and then it I traits over each value because this is a list of tuples. Okay. So we first iterate over the list of tuples, then we iterate over the tuple itself, and we then create entry widgets. We place each value in the tuple in an entry widget. All right. So let me just explain what's going on here because um, there's the entry widget creation. And the reason this is here, well, I'll explain that. Let me just delete that out of there so, so that you'll see why I did that. And let me just remove that as well. Let me just bring this back into a base state so you guys understand what exactly is going on here and why I have done this. So this is what it looks like. These are entry widgets and I've placed these values into them, right? So the, the first problem that you'll notice is that um, you can edit these values. I can delete all of these values. So that's why you're going to make this disabled. You don't want the user to actually mess around with these. Instead of using entry widgets, you could use label widgets over here. That's up to you. I just like to use entry widgets because it gives like a table like feel. Now, another problem that you'll notice is that the values are grayed out, right? So that's where I like to use this disabled foreground is equal to black so that it makes the text black when it's disabled. All right. See, it looks much more natural and it gives that table kind of look and feel. So that's what's going on here. That's how I've created this simple, simple application. This is very, very bare bones. There's honestly a lot more that go, that could go into it, but um, maybe we'll leave that for future videos if there's something you guys want to see. So do let me know down in the comment section below and we'll work on getting that done. Okay.